Good afternoon, my name is Claudia Cernuda and in this video I will explain a case of implementation of total productive maintenance in an injection molding machine. Firstly, I will clarify how an injection molding machine works. Basically and very briefly, the plastic or resin pellets are introduced through the feed hopper. The motor makes them rotate by means of a screw while it is heated. The mix passes through a nozzle and is introduced at high pressure and temperature into a mold, which contains the negative of the part to be manufactured. And subsequently, after a waiting period, the mold slide opens and the final part is extracted. The reason for the selection of this process is that it is increasingly used in industry, especially in the automotive one, where components such as this ventilation control panel or this filter housing, but also much more complicated ones such as the dashboard of the car, are manufactured. It makes sense because it allows a large number of complex parts to be manufactured at low cost and, and it has little scrap. However, it requires a large initial investment because these machines are expensive and also the molds must be very precisely machined. In addition, a lot of fine tuning is required before mass production and modifications to the molds are complex, costly and time consuming. The total productive maintenance methodology was chosen to analyze this process because it is important to have good interdepartmental management during the injection parameters adjustment stage and mold modifications. For example, design engineering department or development department has to know what changes have to be made to the part if it is defective. The project managers have to be aware of the duration of the modifications to be able to modify delivery deadlines. Maintenance has to be very aware of all the phases so that the machine does not fail and deadlines are not delayed, etc. For this reason, it is important that there is good coordination between them and that the project milestones are met. For the analysis, the overmolding of six parts manufactured by stamping is studied for five weeks and the overall efficiency and the utilization rate is calculated. It can be seen in this graph that at the beginning the real production is very far from the theoretical one and that there is a large number of defective parts. In addition, the hours dedicated to unplanned stops or shutdowns are very high, so that, the com so that means that the company's target values for uh, OEE and NU, um, which correspond to 99.6% for 2023, are not reached. In order to gain more knowledge about why these target values are not met, the reasons for unplanned stoppages are studied on the one hand and the reasons for defective parts on the other hand. This table shows the reasons for stoppages, the number of stoppages per week and the time spent in each of them. It can be seen that the most problematic stop is the loading and unloading of the mold, which can also cause large defects in the parts, either because the demolding angles of the part are not, not sufficient or because there is trapping and a demolding agent needs to be used. However, stoppages due to the machine adjustment and calibration uh, are quite normal and they decreased over time. And there are other pro problematic issues, but it is decided to put this one as the first priority because of its criticality. On the other hand, this table shows the most common defects found in the parts manufactured during this period and the most common causes that lead to them. Most of these, such as burns or diesel effect, incomplete filling of the mold, air bubbles, etc., can be solved by repeatedly adjusting the injection parameters such as temperature or pressure, but others, such as the low efficiency of the mold cavities, require a more complex solution in which multiple groups of experts have to intervene. Thus, an interdepartmental meeting was set up and a five-wise diagram like this one was drawn up. It was believed that this deficiency could be due to a problem with the mold or the process itself and possible causes were presented for each of the branches so that they could be then checked and ruled out in the actual production process. Like I said, this meeting was interdepartmental. 
It was attended by technicians, injection molding experts, line engineers, design engineers, and heads of various departments. First of all, it was concluded that the machine had to be specifically cleaned as it had been recycled from the production of another product. Um, fit vents in areas where black burns often appear on parts uh, have to be installed. Non-return valves and cooling systems should be checked more frequently in the preventive maintenance plan. Check dimensional reports before modifying and mold tolerances. Cleaning, cleaning and replacement period of the nozzles should be between smaller batches because they have uh, a lot of friction. The injection channel section is increased to achieve better mold filling. The development department should not only make design drawings but also manufacturing drawings in order to make mold modifications more easily. A gauge tool is designed so that the operator can fit the part and see very quickly if it is good or not. And finally, a more frequent mold repolishing is defined as the roughness of the parts is critical and highly variable in the process. That means um, there is not a pattern. You don't know when to modify the, the tooling. So after two months of implementing the solutions uh, I mentioned, we can see a substantial reduction of, uh, in unplanned downtime, an increase in the number of parts produced, in fact, close to the maximum capacity of the machine, and an approximately linear reduction in defective parts. In the last week study, less than 2% of the target values set by the company are still to be reached. It is expected that in the following weeks, it will progressively increase as a more stable production with a higher quantity of good parts is achieved, but the focus should also really be on reducing plant maintenance stoppages when this stability is reached. So although the implementation of TPM uh, time was short, the following issues were identified. The implementation of TPM was difficult, um, especially at, at first, because um, the people had lack of understanding of how to do their work, they had last lack of trust, uh, they didn't know how to perform uh, in a team, and of course, um, we didn't have a lot of staff resources, time and budget. We also detected a large stock related to spare parts in the warehouse. Um, but the advantage is that we also detected significant improvements in interdepartmental collaboration and communication. We, we performed uh, and arranged a lot of uh, interdepartmental in meetings. Improvements in staff training and senior management involved to be more familiar with this TPM methodology. Optimizations of problem solving and continuous improvement, uh, being that way more nearer to, to the lean manufacturing. The use of Industry 4.0 facilitates communication and red car detection. Um, especially with the, with the program we use called SAP. Um, but of course, of course, two months are not enough to achieve the target values of OEE and utilization rate uh, that were 99.6% um, for 2023. So um, although the, the trend is towards stable production, we have to wait a couple of months or even years to know if this TPM methodology can help us reach these target values. Thank you very much for your attention.